Welcome guys to possibly the most sophisticated gaming mouse to have ever walked the planet. So to be honest when I was opening this box I had no idea what to expect. But I'm telling you, I mean someone should have filmed my reaction. I was literally jaw dropped. But one thing that I really just could not get over is the name of this product. They've called the mouse the James Donkey 007, and after hearing that, I found it very difficult to take this thing seriously. Contrasting with how it looks, you've got this totally dumb name, and it makes no sense. But anyway, you probably noticed there are a lot of parts. You can make 54 different combinations of this one mouse. So you start with the main body, as you can see here, and you've got attachment sockets on the back, the left, and the right, as well as the bottom. So we also have a gold-plated USB cable, which is actually much thicker and longer than I was hoping for. It's actually a little bit messy, unless you're very careful. So in total, we have three back plates, three left plates, three right plates, as well as one replacement bottom. One of them has plastic feet, and the other one metal. And you can decide yourself which one you prefer the feel of. So this is actually a pretty neat mouse, in the sense that firstly there are magnets, which automatically clip the pieces on very neatly and very quickly. And also there are pins which actually detect which piece is in at any one time, which means that the mouse knows so it can react accordingly to the programmable buttons. Now this thing in any configuration looks absolutely stunning. Like a lot of gaming mouses it has a very aggressive design language. It looks bold, it looks futuristic and it looks like it might come out to kill you in the night. Replacing the default plastic plate with a metal plate just adjusts the level of friction. It's actually higher with the metal plate so it's up to you what kind of resistance you want. So in terms of actually using the mouse, it was very, very straightforward. There's no extra drivers needed. You simply plug and play. And I was instantly impressed with the responsiveness. This thing's DPI goes all the way up to 8,200, which basically means that tiny, tiny movements can be measured and recorded. And they're actually extremely precise as well. I was very impressed. Now, when it comes to gaming, most cheap Chinese mice do tend to fail when they can't deliver on the really fast response times required. The James Donkey does actually deliver. It's not exactly the most responsive mouse, but you get a decent response time considering the price. And speaking of price, I think it's quite a bit less than you were thinking. It costs $65, or about £42 in the UK. That's a lot less than you'd expect to pay, considering its feature set, its impressive packaging, and huge customization. And check this out. The thing actually vibrates. This is a super cool feature, which you don't normally see in mice that cost less than £200. Furthermore, it's even got LED strips built into it, as well as two flashlights at the front. When the lights go off, this actually starts to look more like a Lamborghini car than a gaming mouse. The wheel has got a nice grip to it and is very smooth in motion, but the one thing I really think could be improved on this mouse is the finish. I think a matte finish would have really cemented this as the go-to gaming mouse. Having said that though, the current gloss finish isn't exactly terrible. It actually looks nice and it doesn't attract any fingerprints whatsoever. So in conclusion, this is a very, very impressive and interesting product. I've never seen this many possible configurations on anything, ever. And when it's fully assembled, it looks absolutely stunning. It's responsive, programmable, and very suited to gaming, which is what it's intended for. Also, the price was surprisingly low. The only thing that really strikes me is that it seems a little bit pointless to provide so many parts. Once you've decided which ones you prefer, everything you're not using is in a sense just wasted, you're never going to touch it. So it seems to make more sense that you'd just perhaps customise the mouse before you bought it with the pieces that you wanted. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe for more.